this is it, guys. The final countdown. The final episode of... Hey! Get back here! How dare you cut in front of me like that! Ugh, this is so dumb. Why does he have to be such a cheater? You know, in the back of my mind, I sometimes feel like why... That this is why he... He was able to win on so many galaxies and turn so many planets into concrete parking lots and enslave so many people. He cheats at the start. And that's not even mentioning the fact that he's so cheap. He uses throws all these items at you, which I think I stated in my other race against Dockside were the same ones that that Ripper Roo pop and pop and Moto Joke. And wow, I actually managed to hit him and with a distant missile. I took a chance and it worked. This is the first time I actually get in front of him. But yeah, he's much harder in this. Mostly in view when you, you know, like, when you close to 101% completion, got all the relics, tokens, gems. And I think that's because that he's actually faster this time, I'm not entirely sure. But what I do know is, that once again, fighting, racing him on cargo is probably a bad idea. But, hey, it's okay. Because everyone knows that in your racing game, or fighting game, or whatever, you need to have at least one a racer or fighter with cheap shots. Although you're probably going to go through a lot of those to go through this race. Because once again, Oxide just keeps spamming things at you. But as long as you're you're limber and agile enough to dodge them all, you should be fine. But you may have noticed I don't really power slide boost much, and that is precisely because of the power. He makes it so hard to be able to get a, a, even one slide boost off, let alone a slide boost combo. And I get really lucky here with these last three rockets towards the end, and you're about to see why. And, and in this race, if I didn't get enough appreciation for it back in Engine Labs, I especially gave up and gotten appreciation for the Blue Fire. If it weren't for that, I don't think I would have won, won this race. Wow, he ran into the nitro crate, how dumb. Oh yeah, it was the, that nitro crate that I put down earlier. That especially helped me. Gee, I'm glad I didn't run into it my second half. Ha! Trying to dodge my missiles? I don't think so. Don't even try to pass me. Ooh, a photo finish, man! <laughs> and I bet he's so salty about the beat that his screams of rage will echo through the empty vacuum of space. What did I tell you? Uh, you beat me once again! Now I have to go back to the planet Gasmoxia, a complete loser! I must be getting slow in my old age. That's it! I'm finished racing with these mushy backward worlds! Keep your miserable planet! I'm out of here for good! Was that butterfly really in his stomach the whole time? <laughs> anyway, here's what happened to the characters at the end of this. Crash sold his life story to a major movie studio, 
a film entitled The Color Orange will be released for the holidays. Crash can now be found somewhere on a beach, doing what he does best, dancing and napping. You go, Crash. You go. Dr. Neocortex went back to scientific research and discovered a new element in the periodic table. Numerous fa lawsuits failed to change the name he boldly chose for Element 119. Cortex rules the world, he, um... You narcissist. Tiny Tiger's many fans admired his physical prowess, which encouraged him to start a series of online fitness studios. Tiny Bo was an overnight sensation. Tiny then moved to Beverly Hills and founded a popular er, chain of fitness clubs where he sold his patented lemongrass and avocado infused protein supplements. The people couldn't get enough. Coco started her own video game streaming service. Although it's still in the red, share prices are through the roof. Engine opened a custom auto parts studio in Toledo, which closed after a massive recall when his clear the road missile system sparked havoc on the freeways. His affinity for flare and destruction landed him a job as a commentator for Giant Robot Battle Network. Dingo Dal started a new career as a firefighter, trading his flamethrower for a water hose. Since then, he's consistently praised for his effectiveness on the job. Polar became the head flavor scientist for a leading ice cream company. He created new flavors like Salmon Swirl, Squishy Squid Sunday, and Mackerel Mint. But the Tuna Suponi really put them on the map. Pura started the Las Vegas Tiger Show of Zigfield and Floyd. His starring role came to an end when he accidentally closed his mouth a bit too early on Floyd. But he'll have a new act next month. Pinstripe left racing and became a used car salesman in New Jersey. Although a top salesman every month, his uncanny methods led him to lose his license and return to being a CEO and bodyguard. You had it coming, Pinstripe. Papu Papu joined the Wild Wrestling Association and became Mr. Bad Belly. The Bad Belly Bounce was so popular that it ignited a worldwide dance phenomenon known as Big Belly Banging. Ripperoo turned to amusement parks and somehow became a thrill ride engineer, but was blacklisted because the rice just tested his own threshold of pain. Komodo Joe opened Honest Joe's wedding ring and rare gem outlet in Zurich. After numerous sting operations, Joe was convicted of launching stoked cubic zirconia at Couch Slouch Shopping Network. Mo opened a jewelry auction house after. Then Entropy started tinkering with time traveling. He entered a time warp ball to a city with a distant future. There, he met a weird man in a red coat with the sweetest kicks you've ever seen. And nitrous oxide returned to the gas moxie as a broken alien. After therapy, he started racing again, but the unicycle was a horrible choice as the resulting accident ended his ambition for conquest. The details can't be shared due to how gruesome it was. The rating boards are watching us! <laughs> Alright. So that was Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. Good god, was that fun. I enjoyed this game through and through. Even though hard difficulty... Well... Honestly, to say that it was hard was an understatement. It gave me a run for my money. I've had so much trouble with it that I just could, couldn't win a single race on my first try. And even when I did, that luck would diminish due to how unforgiving the AI is. And bear in mind, this is coming from someone who's played Crash Nitro Kart and Crash Team Racing for years. You know it's difficult when even a veteran like me has been having trouble with it. So yeah, it's even though I cut out the parts where I kept failing in and only showed the parts where I win, don't be fooled by that. Especially considering my photo finish with nitrous oxide, <laughs> the, the hard difficulty of adventure mode is not to be taken lightly. I would advise once again that you only do a minimalist playthrough and get 100% on either easy mode or 
or just do the classic if you're going to for the, all the trophies. But if you're not going for all the trophies, then you should probably just stick with a just stick with classic adventure mode or easy and medium difficulty of nitro fueled adventure mode. Either way works. But believe it or not, some of the endings for the characters were actually altered. For example, starting with Coco, instead of starting a video game streaming service, in the original game, it said she started a dating service. And honestly, I don't understand why. Coco honestly doesn't seem like the kind of girl who would be into dating. I mean, sure, back then it's arguable, but I see her more as a tech-savvy, video game-loving marsupial than a, a girl who wants to see all the hotties around the world. But that's me. If you see her as a girl who loves to date, then more power to you. The next one was Dingo Dial, who actually gave the idea of crossbreeding with the slogan, Combine Them All. And if you ask me, I feel like this is where Rilla Roo came from. He's a gorilla and a kangaroo. He was probably interbreeded with a kangaroo and a gorilla, resulting in Rilla Roo. I'm not sure if that counts as being Ripper Roo's brother now that I think about it. But, eh, doesn't matter. Then there's... Uh, Cortex has had a bit of a subtle change. Element, when, when he brought up Cortex rules the worldium, it was originally Element 117 instead of Element 119. I guess the periodic table will change between then and now. I'll have to look at the updated version. And then next was actually Ripper Roo. And his was so insane that I think I'm gonna save it for last. So Papu Papu, his bad belly bounce, his signature move, was actually banned by WWA because the people he used it on suffered suffered from friction burns. Yes, you heard that right. Friction burns. No, I don't know how that works, but <laughs> I guess the the bad head belly bounce would cause the opponents to slide off and through the ring or something like that. But then, Pinstripe actually went to a bit more detail with his backstory in the credits of the original game. Basically, his quote basically involved him saying that the people who rent cars choose quickly when his Tommy gun comes out. Which implies that he points his gun at his customers is because he won't take no for an answer. So, yeah. His, the car company that hired him returned him to being a CEO and bodyguard. You had it coming, Pinstripe. And, fi and finally, Ripper Roo. This is a very unique entry, to say the least. Ripper Roo, after the at the end of the original Crash Team Racing, was actually late elected governor with the campaign slogan "Crazy is as crazy does," and was apparently very successful, and was apparently going to run for president afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that is seriously the original well, credit. It's backstory for Ripper Roo. If you don't believe me, I'll link a video of the original game's credits in the description so you can see for yourself. But the idea of Ripper Roo, who running for president, is insane. And I find it kind of amusing. Heck, if Ripper Roo was running for president, I probably would have voted for him. Whether it be... 
maybe he would have won, depending on who he ran against. Although his policies probably would have caused him to become impeached and the first president to be removed from office after impeachment. But it still would have been crazy to see an insane, straight-jacketed kangaroo of all things become president. One that can barely even talk and can only laugh insanely. Yeah. And a lot of you are probably very disturbed by that, so I'm going to talk about how the four last backstories after that weren't present in in this version. It's about the Tropy Girls. Emmy, Isabella, Liz, and Megumi. For those who don't know, they're called the Trophy Girls. Because they gave out trophies to certain characters. I think Isabella gave trophies to Crash and Coco, Emmy gave trophies to Tiny and Dingo Dial, Megumi gave trophies to Cortex and Engine, and uh, Liz gave trophies to Puller and Pearl. I don't remember which character gave who with certain trophies, but I do know their backs, what happened to them afterwards. Starting with Ami, she was sick of giving out trophies, so she decided to get some of her own by doing some kart racing herself. I guess you can call it salty about you know, seeing others get trophies and being forced to get some, or just jealous or something like that, but overall, since Ami is an, an official character introduced in the July's Grand Prix of this year, which came out not even a month after the game released, like 10 days or something like that. She's, her room is probably loaded with trophies. I bet she's very happy. And hey, since the Nitro Fuel version of Adventure Mode allows you to switch to any character, at any time, maybe you can have Emi beat the feed nitrous oxide. <laughs> that would make her pretty famous. Next is Isabella, who actually appeared in the season finale of Bay Waters. That's quite interesting. I never heard of Bay Waters. I don't know if it's a sitcom or an animated action show or anything like that, but if that show exists, then I may watch it. Maybe. I don't know yet. Next is Liz, who posed for the Band of Boy magazine and was so rich from the earnings she got from it that she actually bought a mansion. I imagine how rich she is now after making every front page on the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel Grand Prix, especially in Nitro Tour. And finally, Megumi, or Megumi, I don't know, who unveiled a perfume called Odicoot. Odor and Bandicoot merged together. And it apparently smelled like fermenting wampa fruit. And I wouldn't be able to know what it would have actually smelled like because we don't exactly know what Wampa Fruit smells like and I'm not sure if we will ever know. Since Wampa Fruit is a fictional type of fruit. Though it seems to be based on apples. So we may have a slight idea on apples. On what the Wampa Fruit may smell like. So overall, I had tons of, of fun with it, from the Grand Prix to the Adventure Mode, the Time Trials, and unlocking new skins for the characters, it was all good clean fun. People may have suffered a burnout, maybe, nowadays, but I still get back, come back to this game on occasion. It's interesting to note that this is the only time I've actually played through Adventure Mode, apart from the Edge Quest that came with the 
with me on Circus Grand Prix. But other than that, I haven't touched this mode. I may play through it again, for nostalgia's sake. But that remains to be seen. Also, there's something I should mention right now. It's something that a lot of people on the internet have been talking about, and it's probably being into death at this point, but this is very important. There is an issue with between YouTube and Kappa or Copa or something like that with kids' content on YouTube. But I've read into it, and it seems that YouTube has been in breaking the Kappa's rules of all time. All the whole time, and it's only now when they're when Cop is actually taking action and forcing YouTube to follow their laws. So, in case something happens to me, my channel, or YouTube themselves, if, if I get sued, my channel gets taken down, or even worse, YouTube gets taken down. Well, some people may be happy about that, considering how bad YouTube has been getting. I need a, an alternative, and thankfully, I have one. It's, there's a recent... Someone has been recently uploading, talking about a new website called Flight Plane. It's similar to YouTube, but different in many ways. First and foremost, it is not a big company. It's an indie website made by only two people. And it, from what I hear, it's not exactly well known right now. Right now, But I will, around, by the time I, my video, this video is uploaded, I will have a flight plane account. And I will be using it as a fail safe in case something goes wrong on YouTube. Like, if I get sued and I have to delete my channel to avoid the lawsuits, or if YouTube is forced to take down my channel, or if YouTube is forced to shut down because of the laws that YouTube has apparently been breaking for quite a long time, basically, Flight Plane will be where to go. I will link my channel in the description, but don't worry if you don't see a single video on my Flight plane account because I will only upload my videos there if something goes wrong on YouTube. So like it again, I already explained it, but so, I the only thing is I have my Spyro and Crash playthroughs on my computer. My Overwatch videos have been stored on my PS4, but I had to delete them from my PS4 to save space. So... If I end up having to move to flight plane, I will likely not upload those videos from Overwatch anymore on flight plane. I will just focus on Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, and other franchises I plan to do soon. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see, and see what happens, and enjoy the content we got. Now, what is, is going to come afterwards? A few things, actually. First of all, I'll, I'll be starting with the time trials for, for both Entropy and Oxide's Ghosts. Basically, similar to you know, Mario Kart, you can race a ghost of your character when you establish a good enough. When you establish a time, it can be good, it can be bad, it can be mediocre, it can be anything. Then you can race that ghost to beat it. Then, but if you manage to achieve a good enough time, you will be able to face the ghost of Entropy. If you beat all of his times, you will unlock him as a playable character, and even will be able to take on Oxide's times too. But, 
uh, nitrous oxides times are just as hard, if not harder, than entropy's times. Uh, because of, of, of how, because, well, Oxide is claims to be the fastest racer in the galaxy. Of course he's going to be better than him. But if you manage to get their trope... Blech. If you manage to beat all of Oxide's times, you'll get a digital skin for Entropy. Speaking of Entropy, I completely forgot to mention when I was talking about what happened to the characters after the credits. In the original game, it said that Entropy went to a distant jungle in the past or something like that, and the game didn't detail whether or not Entropy made it back safely. I can't believe I forgot about that. But then, um, anyway, back to the time trials. Oh, real quick, uh, picture of the dev team, and thank you guys for making this beautiful game. And for getting 101%, I get Hot Rod Nitrous Oxide. So yeah, that's about it. I've done practically everything in the game now. I got all the trophies, won all the relics, got all the keys, the tokens, gems, the heat oxide. The only thing left for me to do now is to drive through the hub worlds one final time before ending this playthrough. But of course, I will also be showing the time trials, because if you beat Entropies and Oxide's times on all the tracks, I'm not sure about the bonus tracks like Retro Stadium or the Grand Prix tracks, you'll get a trophy for both of them. I know Oxide's trophy is Gas Moxie and Slug, I don't remember the name of Entropy's trophy, but I'll find out when I get to that. Then after that, I will be doing the crystal challenges in the tracks you unlock after winning all the cup tournaments in the not in adventure mode, but in like single player or arcade and stuff like that. Because those are unlocked because those are unlocked from the get-go, along with all the Nitro Kart battle stadiums as well. Terra Drone, uh, Magnetic Mayhem, Desert Storm, Temple Turmoil, and Frozen Frenzy. Hey. They all alert. Oh wait, Desert Storm and Terra Drone don't alert, right? Never mind. And finally, I will be doing a compilation of trophies that I acquired off camera. Whether it be during my main playthrough, you know, basically ones that I had to, basically trophies that I got from cut footage, which I still have by the way. The cut footage that I, uh, and I'll basically do a compilation of video of video of trophies that you haven't seen me get. I don't know if I will do commentary for the the trophy compilation, but I know that I probably won't do commentary for the entropy or the in the time trials or crystal challenges because well I already did it. I and even if I didn't do commentary for the time trials in general, what more do I have to say? And I guess that's it. Be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe to my channel, share my video, and yeah, that's it. That's the end of my playthrough. It's been a fun ride. All good things must come to an end eventually. That, of course, means we'll also have to say goodbye to this adorable little bouncing tiger. I'll miss you so much. I'm not actually crying, it's just... 
I'll miss him so much.